Hi students, in this video we are going to see the nasal septum. So nasal septum is otherwise called as the medial wall of the nose. Medial wall of the nose, what are the bones forming the medial wall of the nose is the first side heading. So medial wall of the nose is formed by cuticular part, cuticular part means skin and the cartilaginous part and the bony part. So you should write as cuticular part, cartilaginous part and the bony part. So bony part, the antero superior part is formed by, can you see this, perpendicular plate of ethmoid. And then the postero superior part, the entire thing up to this, this is formed by omar. So this is by omar. So antero superior, it is by perpendicular plate of ethmoid. And postero superior entirely, this is by omar. And anteriorly, in front of this, you have the cartilaginous portion where you keep your, put your nasal rings, nose rings and all that is your cartilaginous portion. So this portion is cartilaginous. And the front, you will be having the hairy part, that is cuticular part. So these are the parts of the uh, nasal septum. And then accessory bones also you do have. Posteriorly you have this, this is the sphenoid layer sinus. So this bone is the sphenoid. So rostrum of the sphenoid and the front you will be having the nasal crest. And here is the perp perpendicular plate of palatine bone. All these they form the accessory bones for the nasal septum. And then mm, blood supply is very important for the nasal septum. For its clinical importance. You have the anterior ethmoidal artery and behind that you will be having the posterior ethmoidal artery. It comes in the anterior portion. Then posteriorly you have the sphenoparietal foramen here, sphenoethmoidal. So through that you will be having the sphenopalatine. So sphenopalatine foramen is there inside. Through that you have the sphenopalatine artery comes out. And <coughs> here sorry, here you have the greater palatine arteries. Through that greater, pal greater palatine foramen, through that greater palatine vessels will be coming here. And here is your lips. So superior labial branch of uh, facial artery will be coming here. So these all the arteries they supply the nasal septum. The beauty about this from here the anterior ethmoidal comes here the anterior inferior part of the septum and from here your greater palatine comes from here your superior labial comes and from here your sphenopalatine comes all these four anterior ethmoidal superior labial antero inferiorly and from here posteriorly you have the sphenopalatine and the greater palatine all this posterior inferiorly you have the greater palatine all the four palatine all the four vessels they form a plexus over here in the anterior inferior part of the septum that is called as Kieselbach's bucks plexus this area is called as little's area and here the posterior model will not come and directly connects with it Posterior model anastomosis it will join with the anterior ethmoid model or with the sphenopalatine and joins in this anastomosis. It will not be coming as a straight branch. Okay, so these four arteries. But nasal septum arterial supply you have to mention all the arteries. And then next uh, this is the little area. This is the Kieselbach plexus. So if the small children if they uh, traumatic uh, injury, it means uh, if they prick their nose with the finger it may lead to bleeding bleeding through the nose is called epistaxis or in hypertensives the nasal bleeding occurs through this Kieselbach's plexus only next thing is nerve supply nerve supply you the same anterior ethmoidal nerve you have and uh, posteriorly you have the instead of the sphenopalatine nerve here you will be having the posterior nasal nerves posterior nasal branches from the pterygopalatine ganglia on this side it will be sending branches as usual here from the greater palatine nerve and here instead of writing the superior labial you have to write this is the alveoli right the teeth are here no sockets are here so this is alveoli so superior alveolar nerve so these are all the nerves supplying the nasal septum but here extra sensory is your olfactory olfactory rootless will be coming here so there is a sensory so this is about the nerve supply of the nasal septum so blood supply, nerve supply and the bones forming the nasal septum with its clinical application is one is epistaxis. In children it is a traumatic injury and then for the adults it because of the hypertension and another one important clinical application is deviated nasal septum. If the septum is deviated towards one side, the opposite side of the nasal uh, that opening will be narrowed, the nasal passage will be narrowed leads to another portion will be uh, wider. So it may lead to turbinate hypertrophy. So in this you can see both the lateral wall and the medial wall. So this if you keep it together, you will be having the nose in the front. Okay. So here see look at this. The nose only we have divided. That's why this one part it is becoming as a nasal septum and the other part uh, is becoming the lateral wall of the nose. The next video we will see the lateral wall of the nose clearly.